Welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a man that really hopes that there's another shot-for-shot remake of Psycho. It's Robert Lamb. That is my favorite remake. How are you doing, Mark? Good. So they're going to remake it now. They'll start filming in 2021. Who should be Norman Bates? Wait, Who's are, Norman Bates? So is it? it's a shot-for-shot shot remake of the remake? Because there is like one extra scene in that movie. <laughs> Yeah, so yes, it's a shot for shot remake of the remake. Dang. All right. So who We're should going be Norman like Bates? Levels here. Yeah, who who do you want to see in it? Uh Sebastian Stan. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> that was like the That's first thing. Not, not too bad, right? <laughs> I was trying to think who looks like Vince Vaughn kind of, but he, he doesn't really, but it's just I don't know. That's it's really funny you said that because as soon as you said it, like, you, you know what I like it. about Norman Bates when he laughs nervously, it's not right. really acting. It's a great laugh. But when <laughs> Vince Vaughn laughs in the Psycho remake, he's like, <laughs> yeah. And so it, <laughs> and so it sounds like he's just trying to mimic a laugh. But I think Sebastian Stan could. He would have to like debulk and wear flannels. Right. That's true. Yeah. He can't be as muscular. He can't be the Winter Soldier at the motel. Yeah. He can't have a metal arm. Well, that'd be maybe if he's well, wearing a glove, he's fine. It's true, man. That's not bad. Yeah, that's, I mean, listen, and the and the what was the only scene that they added was uh, Vince Vaughn masturbating yep. scene. <laughs> Which honestly, I will say this: I read the book by uh, Robert Block, uh, Psycho, and out of all the books I've ever written or written read. Uh, you most, rewrote it. I, re, I rewrote it. I remade it as a book. I just rewrote it, and you I added a second book? masturbation scene. <laughs> no, out of all the books I've read, that was probably the closest to the the movie was the closest adaptation to that book. Like you know, like other books, a lot of times the the movies deviate like a lot, but that was like a almost like verbatim recreation. And actually, I think the masturbation scene was in the book. They that's why they brought it back for the remake. Yeah, they probably couldn't have done that in 60. No, they could. They, that was the first time they showed a toilet flushing. Wow. Yeah. And everyone walked out thinking they saw red. Yeah, yeah. If you weird. think about that movie with the lingerie, with the death, with this, like the shower scene, that movie was quite controversial in 60. It really was. I mean, the, and, and, and the toilet. Don't forget the toilet. Yeah, the toilet flushing. Can't you show the toilet. See that water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can't. yeah uh, it's pretty interesting. And that, so I have a question. Uh, we're going to start, we've been potting together since 2015, recording together since 2015. Damn, bro. Yeah, exactly, right? And so I, we're going to kind of start a fun series talking about the data articles that I've been writing since 2015, coincidentally. And I gave you a bunch of options, and this is horror remakes, to talk about a horror remake article I wrote in 2019. And I've since looked up and kind of updated. Like, well, how, what led you to picking this one first? So... It's funny. I'm not a huge fan of remakes, but I do like horror and I'm like, but I'm kind of like picky with my horror. So like when I saw the, I was just interested in the article in the sense of what, what horror remakes, because one of my favorite movies of all time is John Carpenter's The Thing. And I, Mm -hmm. and that's a remake of the Howard Hawks movie, The Thing from Another World or whatever, uh, from the fifties. And, uh, I would love it if that was the title, The Thing from Another (laughs) World or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, or whatever, somewhere, it's from somewhere. <laughs> the thing from isn't that what, is it from another world or from another planet? Planet, planet, or whatever, or whatever. Uh, see, see, Sebastian Stan could pull that off. He he would he would be the Kurt Russell part for sure. Whoa! But I, that's why I was interested. I was like, I wonder if there are any other good like remakes that I'm not thinking of. Another one is The Fly. That was another favorite of mine. So The Fly and and uh, The Thing. I was like, let's see what else is up there. And uh, when I went through. I mean, I will say when I went through your article, I wasn't surprised by the the percentages and the data because uh, a lot of remakes aren't usually that great. Yeah, it's kind of wild. When I looked at it, the average score for the 81 movies I looked at was was is is 44 point of 91 movies I looked at is 44.4 percent. So that's rotten. Right. Like That's not even close to fresh. No. Like I was actually kind of surprised by this because. I was I Were was thinking though? maybe it would be a third in the thirties. That's oh low oh I yeah. It. I thought it was going to be low lower too. I thought you were saying that you thought it was going to be higher. No, because there's so many that drag the average down. So when I saw forty four, you know what's funny? When I I go into a lot of these data articles, uh, I have no specific goal in mind. I like to collect the data, collect as much as possible, 
mm-hmm. and then I just like to see what happens. So I never have an ulterior motive with it. This one was just like, hey, I'm going to look at horror remakes and see how they do. Do you pick a set I, number, though? Like uh, you said no, 91. I'm, I always go over a set number. Like I did a vampire drinking blood data post. and I was like, I'll do 50. And I ended up with 90. OK. And so it's it's just I don't want to leave much on the table. And what I like, there are remakes that I have. So what I think my basis was I took remakes with over 15 reviews on the tomato meter. OK. And so because there's a lot of remakes that have nothing just don't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like no one watches them. They're just like, straight they to don't video get or anything like that, too. What's up? Straight to video. Yeah. And three people review them. Yeah. And so I wanted to do I wanted to stick to like theatrically released ones as well, just so I have. OK, here are theatrically released remakes with at least 15 reviews. Right. And that sets a nice guideline. Like when I did the vampire one, they needed to have at least 15 reviews. And that cut out thousands, <laughs> what felt like thousands of them because oh, there's so many vampire movies. So I just, I, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to prove that horror remakes were bad. I didn't want to prove that they're better than expected. I just went into this thinking, oh, this is fun because for me, I remember in the two thousands when the, when the ring came out and then Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out mm-hmm. and then Grudge and I mean, we're talking every like all the slasher movies, all like Japanese horror movies. They were just being remade and remade in the 2000s. Mm-hmm. And then I, I kind of got thinking that like remakes are really nothing new. I mean, you had the Dracula Universal, then you had the Hammer, uh, uh, Dracula Hammer movies. Then you have Bram Stoker's. Dra- I mean, these movies just keep getting made. There's different book adaptations. Right. There's different. So, I mean, this is really nothing new. But I was mainly influenced by the 2000s of how many stupid remakes I watched. Yeah, I don't think it's anything new. I do think it's in abundance now for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, Because people always I always find it funny when uh, like I go see a movie with a friend or something like that. And people always say like, oh, all they do is remakes now or back. Back in the day, they never did this many remakes or or sometimes I get a, I hear a lot of complaints about people saying, oh, movies are so long nowadays. And I'm just like, no, there are <laughs> remakes. Uh, every David Lean movie from the 60s was three and a half hours. I mean, like Ben-Hur is a remake and won 11 Academy Awards. I mean, remakes and long movies are nothing new. But I do think remakes are in abundance now for the fact that just, I don't know, I, I like you said, maybe I think like one of your part of. Uh, the article said, like, you know, one movie does well as a remake and then all of a sudden everybody wants a piece of that. And I mean, look at The Ring when it came out. I mm-hmm. mean, that was a blockbuster. Yeah, it was just a huge hit. People were watching that. And a year later, you have The Grudge. And then a year later, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I think they became they kind of hit in vogue again because the 90s. Remember the 90s? We just had Scream. And then we had I Know What You, know did, you did Last, last summer. summer. Yeah. And then we had The Faculty. And it was just kind of. Faculty we is such of, a hidden gem. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. I'm not hating on them. Although I it's kind I'm of just... a loose remake of like the thing, I think. I mean, it's like similar. Yeah. It's it's not a remake, but I mean, they have a scene that's directly it's yeah, just I know. with the drugs, <laughs> yeah. the jingle jangle or whatever they're sniffing. Yep. I mean, it's a it's a good movie. I mean, I love the cast, but we were just getting, you know, like Halloween H two O, which I still love. But there there wasn't too many remakes in the 90s but then they just explode i did a graph on on another article i wrote about just the sheer amount of remakes that came out and i think it went from like 4 to 17 in the 2000s wow just the amount of the remakes and so for me i started i started appreciating the good ones it was kind of interesting what happened as opposed to me going all remakes suck i began to like wonder what is a good horror remake like and i wanted to know What are they? So, I mean, Fright Night 2011, I think, is an excellent remake that Mm -hmm. honors the original. It isn't the original, but it still brings enough to like it's a companion piece to the 85 Fright Night or Dawn of the Dead 2004 to Dawn of the Dead 78. Like those are both good companion piece movies to each other. Yep. And so I that's like where I base this all on. And also too, what I like about writing these tomato meter articles, a lot of people are like, this is stupid, but it's. It, that's everything. Like, I don't well, yeah, that happens stuff. every time. Yeah, but it's uh, I, what I like about these are that this is just numbers, man. Like, I'm just objectively showing you numbers. Right. This isn't. You're not being like. opinionated and picking necessarily what you think is the best. You're just showing through Rotten Tomatoes the scores and and, and how they average out. You know, you know what's interesting too? Like, the best horror remakes 
come from originals. They're the originals that have an 87.6 tomato meter average. And then the rotten ones come from horror movies with a 74% average. So, right, so more often be than not, if you remake a great film, you're going to have a higher score than a, a good film. But it's quite interesting. I, I don't know. I like I love the numbers that came back here that if you remake a great film, there's ch- odds are your critical score will be higher. It's like weird because I I was going to ask you about that. I, I put that in my notes uh, for the fact that I was wondering, like, why don't they remake uh, not necessarily bad movies and try to make them better, but just like movies that weren't like that great. Like I love George Romero. I love him. But the crazies, the original, like it's fine. I don't think it's like maybe it's more of like a cult hit now, but like it wasn't anything that like really grabbed me. But I will say that the remake I thought was actually pretty decent. Like I thought it was a decent oh, remake of that. I thought I thought like if they did more of that kind of stuff where they took movies that weren't like considered technically classics and try to remake them and try to remake them better that that might be, I don't know, easier to do, but I guess not. Yeah. Cause I mean, it, when you have the great source material, like even if you yeah. mess up some of it, you still have great source material. That's true. So it's, uh, and I mean, I love what you said about the crazies though. I mean that, you know, what's interesting too. I mean, the crazies came out in 2010. You know, what's crazy about mm-hmm. that. It came out in 2010, which is kind of when all the other, major properties had been <laughs> released right so i, I don't know I, and you know what's interesting about that crazies man that shot in iowa they have timothy oliphant rada mitchell uh breck eisner i think he shot that movie beautifully yeah and maybe you go into it with lower expectations so then you that's what you i like did. it more right i think that might have helped but uh, honestly personally i think that helped but also if you look at the round tomato score it has a fresh rating doesn't it it's like 70 something mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of the few with a fresh rating. Right, the so craziest. there's something to it. I mean, obviously, the actors, the scripts, uh, if they change things, the uh, the um, directing, all that's going to play a part. So obviously that, you know, that could make it a, a better movie too. But I just think taking a movie that maybe wasn't the greatest and trying to make it better, I just thought that that might be a little bit easier, but maybe not. I mean, I guess, like you say, just taking – original source material that is just considered a classic. But a lot of times you go in with high expectations and it's not, they don't always live up to it. You know, when I think a remake fails is when they try to remake a la- the last house on the left or the, I mean, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre made a lot of money, but it's not good. Right. I mean, they just based the entire marketing on Jessica Biel, but they, when I think horror remakes fail when they try to remake the really gritty ones. And then they just make very homogenized, boring, safe-ish ones because you can't recreate that insanity from the seventies. Right. Like you can't like you can't recreate the last house on the left. Like you, that you was can't. A, yeah, the shock value is gone. And so I don't know why you do that movie. I mean, I understand why you do remake Dawn of the Dead and make them fast. Right. Uh, I, I those are the ones I, I definitely understand. Yeah, I think last uh, last house on the left is one of those where you'd probably have to change up the scripts like a lot more because you can't do kind of like the same type of thing because it's not it's not that same feel. It's not it's not a shock to people. There there's so much torture porn out there already that you're not really you're not doing anything different that people haven't done before. Um, mm-hmm. And it did feel a little bit safer ish. God, I barely remember it. I remember a microwave. Because it's not good. Like that's that's bad. Like, yeah. The original, it's burnt my memory. Right. I remember watching that and just feeling this is like a documentary. This isn't good. This isn't safe. Right. I I feel I don't know. I feel kind of dirty watching this, and you don't really feel that. I'm not saying it's good to be, feel dirty watching a movie, but right. the, Wes Craven he didn't really want to make a horror movie, and he just the way he let the camera linger and the performances felt like you were watching the real thing, and I don't know why. I don't know why you remake that. And they got a good cast, too, for that remake. Yeah. But, I, like, that one, of course, really didn't do that well. But then you have you – know, and also, too, I think the Japanese horror remake craze was quite smart, too, because you, know, you, you go remake The Ring. You remake The Grudge. 